There has never been a better time to be in Farmers Branch. It is a pivotal time of growth for our city. Farmers Branch was recognized as the fifth most desirable city in Texas to start your business. According to John Quincy Adams, if your actions inspire others to dream more, to learn more, and become more, you are a leader. Without question, our mayor lives up to this definition of leadership. I would like to introduce and thank Mayor Phelps for not only being a leader for Farmers Branch City, but for taking the responsibility of leadership. Please welcome the Honorable Bob, Mayor Bob Phelps. Yeah, it is afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here today. This is always one of my favorite things to do, is come before you on these occasions and share the great things going on in Farmers Branch. This year, it's bittersweet as this will be my last report to you. But it is my pleasure to bring it to you because Farmers Branch is in the midst of a great evolution that city leaders 50 years from now will look back on in a dramatic turning point in the history of our community. To state it plainly, the state of city of Farmers Branch has never been stronger. There are many people responsible for that. And right now, I'd like to introduce those that I work with every day setting the stage for the yes. First, I'm grateful to the members of our city council. Next, and you all know this by now, we have the greatest assembled city staff that can be found anywhere, led by our city manager, Charles Cox, and deputy city manager, John Land. Finally, I'd like to be remiss and in a lot of trouble if I didn't recognize the greatest partner and supporter that I've ever had, my wife, Dee. So Dee, thanks. She deserves those accolades, so. The strong state of our city begins with the numbers. And on this note, our property values speak volumes. They continue to rise in 2016 with commercial property up 8.2%, commercial uh, business personal property up 1.5%, and residential values surging upward 9.6%. Of our total certified property values of $4.85 billion, our commercial and corporate citizens account for almost 80% of that. In the past year, there was $94.7 million in new commercial and construction in Farmers Branch and a number of big business moves that are important to our city. A global business merger with a huge impact for our local campus was announced last week when eyeglass maker Essilor of France announced it would merge with Luxata Group of Italy, owner of the Ray-Ban and Oakley brands, in a $49 billion deal that will create a giant in the eyewear industry. Of course, Essilor's U.S. headquarters is in Farmers Branch. And even though we don't know the full impact of the merger on the local campus, we do know that Essilor already has plans to expand into recently acquired buildings to the north which suggests even greater things to come for this property and this company. One of the biggest deals of the past year has been the deal to fill the old IBM call center in the Valwood District. Farmers Branch got a big boost over the summer when Fazy Import announced they had acquired the 225,000 square foot building and would be using it for storage and warehousing to support their iconic Dallas location on Stimmons Freeway. We also had a tremendous boost this year when Cuervo Corporation acquired the 26-acre Maxim integrated site on the east side of the city. Based in North Carolina, Cuervo manufactures chip technology for cell phones and for the defense industry. Then Farmers Branch had another one of our huge vacancies filled earlier this year when home decor retailer At Home made the decision to fill the old Walmart big box space on Midway at LBJ. Amsterdam-based Valti has moved their U.S. headquarters for the water deionization company into 6,600 square feet at 1920 Hutton Drive, <coughs> Hutton Court, I'm sorry. 
Best Cheer Stone now occupies nearly 36,000 square feet at 2020 Valley View Lane, and Dallas Party Rental has set up shop at 4343 Sigma in 15,692 square feet. Although 7-Eleven opted to locate their corporate campus up the road a bit, our tourism team worked with the Omni Park West to snag the 7-Eleven travel business so that their corporate clients stay here when attending activities at their headquarters. The Wyndham Garden Hotel also grabbed a share of the corporate travel business by landing Southwest Airlines for their property. All in all, it's a testament to our ongoing effort that the Farmers Branch Economic Development Team has landed on the Dallas Business Journal's list of top 10 economic development agencies in Dallas-Fort Worth for the fourth year in a row. With the value of the deals measured at $843.9 million, new economic development director Allison Cook and her team placed number four on the current list behind only Frisco, Arlington, and Fort Worth. Good job, lady. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> then, on the heels of the honor, Allison landed in D. CEO Magazine's list of the Dallas 500. That is the top 500 most powerful business leaders in Dallas. And I think she was number one, if I remember right. <laughs> we already knew that in Farmers Branch, we're fortunate to have Allison working for us each and every day. As a testament to their expertise, the Farmers Branch Economic Development Team was also recognized last year for their commitment to professional economic development by the Texas Economic Development Council. Back to the numbers. It shouldn't surprise anyone that you know that 25, two, I'm sorry, 256 new businesses moved into Farmers Branch in the past fiscal year. 256. And uh, with them, they brought 1,089 new jobs and occupied 1.5 million square feet of space. In addition, our tourism office helped to generate 33,368 room nights in Farmers Branch hotels last year, bringing in nearly 189,000 in tax revenue. Of course, as much as the business community provides the lifeblood of Farmers Branch, our neighborhoods provide the heart to that end, our neighborhood renaissance and demolition rebuild programs have been making steady progress in their efforts to make Farmers Branch neighborhoods enduring places for residents to call home. A total of 17 lots were purchased by the city in 2016 as a means of igniting residential development in certain areas of the city. In addition, 13 demolition, demolition rebuild incentive applications were approved by the city council, providing a financial incentive for a resident to move an existing home, and uh, move, remove an existing home and replace it with a newer one. After demolishing and rebuilding these 13 homes, their value went in uh, from $1.3 million in value to $6.2 million in value. And that'll bring in a few tax dollars, so we're proud of that. Our attention to residential development has not gone unnoticed. Twice in the past year, the respected real estate blog candiesdirt.com has underscored Farmers Branch once trumpeting the housing renaissance in our city saying we had transitioned from a sleepy suburb to a vibrant city. Then later this year candiesdirt.com called out a specific multi-family project as a real standout among other apartment communities. They said the Billingsley Company had brought New York City architectural charm to Farmers Branch with the brickyard. That's where my wife and her live in now so <laughs> the blog went on to praise the industrial structure of the architecture of the project, along with its brick detail, metal frame windows, metal awnings, arched windows, and walk-up style housing. While we're in the virtual realm, we also received accolades from backgroundchecks.com when they named Farmers Branch one of the 50 safest city in Texas out of 1,800 municipalities. They based their research largely on FBI statistics and concluded that the change, chance of being victimized by violent crime in Farmers Branch was 0.04 percent. 
And speaking of regional cooperation, Farmers Branch and Carrollton were named the Thrillist.com as one of the top suburban areas to live, drink, and eat. A consistent theme of recent development in Farmers Branch has been housing. A variety of family projects, multifamily projects, either on the ground or on the drawing board in the past few years, have the potential to raise the population of the city by 20% or more. The city is now working with Centurion American Development for a master plan community on 268 acres on the west side of Farmers Branch that will consist of low density, single family, detached, and multifamily residential use, along with retail, restaurant, office, entertainment, and hotel land uses. In addition to the Centurion American Development on the west side, site plans for a new 424-unit multifamily project on the future extension of Knights Bridge Road and a 117-room Hampton Inn Hotel on Miro Vista Boulevard has been approved. A tax increment reinvestment zone and a public improvement district are planned to finance public infrastructure in the area. At full development, this master plan project, combined with our recent multifamily projects, could expand the population of Farmers Branch by as much as 6,000 residents. Then the council just last week approved a comprehensive plan to address the future of our east side corridor to create a district with a unique identity based on a diverse mixture of uses that creates opportunities to live, work, do business, and participate in leisure activities for people already connected to the area and those who have yet to discover it. Two new multifamily projects are already on the way. JPI Real Estate Acquisition is proposing a five-story apartment building, including a clubhouse, two interior courtyards, a pool, internal parking structure on Landmark Boulevard. There will be 324 one- and two-story, I'm sorry, one- and two-bedroom units on the 4.1 acres. Then Leeds Real Estate is proposing four mixed-use buildings consisting of residential apartment and townhomes over first-floor retail on Blue Lake Circle and McEwen Drive. The 586 units will be developed in two phases. <clears throat> in 2014, Farmers Branch voters approved bonds for a makeover of 42 streets that had been identified in a scientific survey as needing attention. The city is contributing, contributing an additional 500000 per year over the 10-year life of the project to bring the total investment in Farmers Branch streets to $28.5 million. So far, we have invested $10 million of the Phase I issuance of $13 million. Phase II will be issued in the spring of 2018. One of the biggest projects to date is currently underway on Valley View. Uh, it's being reconstructed between Josie and Webb's Chapel. In fact, the traffic just switched to the new pavement on the south side of the roadway last week while crews get ready to tackle the north side. Another major project under the program now underway is the reconstruction of the southbound Marsh Lane Bridge over Farmers Branch Creek. Anyone that has ever driven down Marsh Lane between Valley View and Brookhaven Club knows that the southbound bridge was substantially lower than the newer northbound bridge. Unfortunately, the end result has been that even minor flooding from heavy rain has tended to submerge the southbound bridge. This has resulted in past rescues of motorists that didn't realize how deep the water was. Well, construction is now underway to fix that problem. As of now, both lanes of traffic are traveling on the northbound bridge, while the southbound bridge has been demolished in advance of its makeover. Dallas County is administering the construction and picking up 50% of the cost. Farmers Branch has the other 50%, which is $1.2 million. One of the hallmarks of Farmers Branch in recent years has been our cooperative ventures with our neighbors that serve to increase service and decrease costs by synergizing specific services. <clears throat> One of the greatest examples of regional cooperation that we've shared in the interest in history of our respective communities went online almost a year ago. The North Texas Emergency Communications Center may not be the first combined dispatch operation in the region, but it is more sophisticated and technically advanced than any that came before it. A joint project between Farmers Branch and our friends in Addison, Carrollton, and Coppell, NTECC, NINTEC, is designed to streamline the process of dispatching police and fire personnel to locations within our respective communities, saving time, money, and hopefully lives. We were very proud when Farmers Branch became the first of our four cities to go live on NTAC back in February of this year. 
uh, last year. <laughs> the other three quickly followed, and now Intech is fully functional. 24-7 state-of-the-art public safety dispatch operation, handling more than 183,000 calls in the first year. Also, while we're in the subject of joint public safety operations, I'm proud to say that another state-of-the-art facility is now under construction in Farmers Branch, and soon our new fire training tower will be providing invaluable life-saving training for firefighters, firefighters, paramedics, and police officers in Farmers Branch, Carrollton, Coppell, and Addison. These are classic examples of how our pooled resources can be put to better use for the benefits of all of our citizens. We're truly stronger together than we are separately. Continuing to talk transportation, the City of Farmers Branch made major strides in the past year to lay out and adopt a master plan for trails that would link different areas of the city with each other, as well as into the other trail systems across the region. Our component, one component of that plan was the installation of so-called sharrows on city streets that remind motorists that cyclists have the right to a lane of traffic. The first sharrows went down on Valley View earlier this year. The trail system plan will also tie into the John F. Burke Nature Preserve, our 108-acre pristine wilderness on the west side of Farmers Branch. <clears throat> Recently, the City Council approved a master plan for future development of that preserve, including trails, education facilities, and more, that will enable the Parks and Recreation Department to seek grant funding that will aid the project going forward. Of course, one of the biggest things happening in Farmers Branch this year has been the return of curbside recycling to our residents. The program has been a great success so far with 1,253 tons of material recycled by approximately 8,000 households, a, partition, a participation rate of 85%. Since the program began last April, that nine-month total is approximately triple the entire amount of recycled material donated in all of 2015 through our old drop-off program. Of course, we have extraordinary special events dotting the calendar throughout the year, but I'm going to brag on two in particular. Not only is the Blooming Bluegrass Free Music Festival coming into its own as an established destination in the bluegrass world, with guests coming to Farmers Branch from around the country. The accompanying chili cook-off also is growing in stature as a CASI-sanctioned chili event, and those, fake, those folks take their chili very seriously. But it was celebrated and established Farmers Branch tradition that really had a breakout year in 2016. The Christmas Tour of Lights celebrated its 25th anniversary with the most widely successful edition ever. More than 18,000 vehicles passed through the tour this season, easily exceeding last year's total of just under 14,000. In addition, donations to the Farmers Branch nonprofits and civic organizations that helped work the tour each night nearly doubled the previous year's total with more than $60,000 going to those great groups. Taking a look at local commerce on more of a grassroots level, the city of Farmers Branch brought back an old favorite activity last year, but with a new feel. The Farmers Branch Market ran a very successful inaugural season at the Grove and Mustang Crossing on Saturday mornings and as the only farmers market in the Dallas area on a dark light rail line. More than traditional Farmers Branch Fair of fresh fruits and vegetables, the Farmers Branch Market also features specialty foods meats, eggs, and more, and with special events every first Saturday of the month. The Farmer's Ranch Market will be returning on Saturdays in the Grove at Mustang Crossing from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. beginning April 1st, and they're currently looking for vendors. Anyone interested in becoming part of this great tradition or to find out more information, visit FarmersBranchMarket.com. Finally, we need to note our changing of the guard city manager's office. After nearly nine years of dedicated service, Gary Greer retired from city management earlier this year to enter the private sector. However, our organization didn't skip a beat as longtime finance director Charles Cox was ready to step in and assume the mantle of authority to take our city to even greater heights. To help him do that, one of the first things Charles did was promote John Lynn to deputy city manager. Between the two of them, our city council is confident that the future of Farmers Branch is in very good hands. So here we go. Seventeen years into the 21st century, Farmers Branch stands as a shining example of an established community that is continuing to reinvent itself, 
to keep up with the contemporary needs of its people for housing, transportation, and quality of life. We may be a community that honors its rich Texas history, but make no mistake, Farmers Branch is a progressive city and a welcoming people with their collective eye firmly fixed on the future. And this is a story that will continue to evolve as Farmers Branch becomes an even more vibrant and vital 21st century city. For all the opportunities that I have been afforded to be a part of this through the last 25 years, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you and God bless. He is the longest serving mayor in Farmers Branch history. And so we want to thank you. This is a small tribute that we wanted to show. Mayor Phelps says it's been an honor to serve the city of Farmers Branch and its citizens. He was first elected to the city council in 1986, and he served nine years on council. During that time, he served as mayor pro tem two separate times and sat on the Charter Review Committee in 1988. He was elected mayor in 1996 and was unopposed in 99, 2002, and 2005, serving 12 consecutive years as mayor. This makes him the longest serving mayor in Farmers Branch history. He was again elected as mayor of Farmers Branch in 2014. The Neighborhood Renaissance Program, which give citizens incentives to build new homes within the city was started during his tenure. Also started was the dividend program for which Farmers Branch was honored by the Ford Foundation and Harvard University for innovations in American government for the dividend program. As Farmers Branch was the first city to begin a program like this, like it for its citizens to encourage growth and revitalization. He has been a leader in the Farmers Branch community and regional organizations, including the Dallas Regional Mobility Coalition, Regional Transportation Council, and president of the Metroplex Mayors Association. He has also held the role of president, secretary, and treasurer of the North Central Texas Council of Governments, which serves a 16-county region in, North Texas, in the North Texas region. Bob was honored in 2008 with the opening of the Bob Phelps Fire Administration Building. He assisted our police department as a volunteer in COPS and volunteered with our fire department. We cannot thank you enough for your service and leadership. I would like to ask Mayor Phelps and his wife, City Manager Charles Cox, John Land, Fire um, Chief Steve Parker, Chief of Police, David Hale, all to come up for a thank you and a, and a picture. And we just, we cannot thank you enough for your service and leadership. 